It can detect a threat using AI and respond 60 times faster. It lets you know where your data lives down to the very server. It keeps your insights from prying eyes so they're used by no one else but you. It is the cloud. The IBM cloud. The cloud that's built for all your apps. AI ready. Secure to the core. The IBM cloud is the cloud for smarter business. My time is thin, but so is my lawn. It's been worn down to ugly, thin grass. Now there's new Scott's Thicker Lawn, the revolutionary three-in-one solution for weak lawns. With a soil improver to strengthen roots, seed to fill in gaps, and fertilizer to feed. The result? Up to a 50% thicker lawn after just one application. Now your time is our time. This is a Scott's Yard. Roseanne, the number one show on television, meets the neighbors. They hate us. We don't hate you. We're scared of you. We're scared of you, too. You have no reason to believe those people want to hurt you. They'd have to get to know you first. New Roseanne, Tuesday on ABC. Hi, I'm Monday. I know, people don't like me. That's fine. I'm not really wild about people. Oh, hey, Monday. Oh, but lately, they've been dragging me to places that are way too much fun. I mean, look at this place. Like, people are winning and laughing. <laughs> Doing that, I know. It's five in the afternoon, for Pete's sake. Monday, up top. Oh, what's wrong with you? There's more to life than the climb. There's the view. You've got to stop and look around a little. Come, shed life's layers in Asheville. Asheville, discovery inside and out. Live celebrating Mother's Day with a chance to win a trip for two to NYC, including airfare, hotel, afternoon tea, and VIP tickets to life. Watch Good Morning Washington Monday for your chance to win. Unfamiliar waters, hundreds of miles from base. All that training and discipline pay off. And you find out what your team is really made of. The whole island! And these exotic waters? All thanks to rewards from my Navy Federal flagship credit card. Woo! Hey, Mo, what's this? <laughs> Looks like we're all winning this weekend. You're going down, Dad! <laughs> Navy Federal Credit Union. Open to the armed forces, the DOD, veterans, and their families. Our airport pat downs going too far. Seven on your side, Monday at six. Tonight, the exclusive interview raising new questions about President Trump's personal life and political future. The president's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, on the defensive. The one on one interview, Giuliani's new explanation about the $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels and raising the possibility of more payoffs to other women. Plus, will President Trump take the fifth in the Russia investigation? Breaking right now, the state of emergency in Hawaii. The Kilauea volcano erupting, lava flowing into backyards, homes destroyed. Authorities bracing for more eruptions. Deadly road rage. The Air National Guard member stabbed on the highway. The manhunt underway at this hour. Swept away, powerful flash floods rushing through a major city, washing cars down the street, several people injured. And the deadly explosion blamed on a popular device, the vape pen that may have burst into flames. The warning tonight. From ABC News, this is ABC World News Tonight. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday. I'm Tom Yamas. And we begin with President Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, opening the floodgates to new questions about the president, the Russia investigation, and the Stormy Daniels case. In an ABC News exclusive, Giuliani asked to untangle the timeline when President Trump knew about the $130,000 payment to the adult film star. Giuliani also raising the possibility of more payoffs to other women. 
the former New York mayor, then making major headlines involving the special counsel saying he wouldn't rule out the president taking the fifth if he testifies before Robert Mueller. ABC's Tara Paul Mary leads us off at the White House. Tonight, one of the president's top lawyers, Rudy Giuliani, trying to do damage control, facing growing questions about when President Trump knew about the $130,000 hush payment to Stormy Daniels. When did the president first learn that Stormy Daniels wanted don't, money to keep quiet about the relationship? Don't know and doesn't matter to me. Giuliani igniting the firestorm days ago with a media blitz when he revealed the president repaid Michael Cohen. Funneled through the law firm and the president repaid it. Oh, I didn't know he did. Everybody was nervous about this from the very beginning. I wasn't. Cohen didn't even ask. Uh, Cohen, didn't, Co Cohen made it go away. He did his job. In today's appearance on This Week with George, Giuliani repeatedly short on facts. So the president did know about this after the campaign. I can't say that. I mean, I, at some point, yes, but it could have been recently. It could have been a while back. Those are the facts that we're still uh, wor working on. But I, uh, right now, I'm at the point where I'm learning, and I can only, I can't prove that. I can just say it's rumor. Why did the president deny any knowledge of the payments when, in fact, he well, had made I don't the know. I, I, I don't know when the president uh, learned about it. He could have learned about it after. At one point, downplaying the importance of the president's truthfulness on the matter. It's to me, okay as a lawyer, to lie to the press? Uh, gee, I don't know. You, you know a few presidents who did that. I don't think this president has done that. But in any event, that's not the crime. Then, Giuliani making a stunning statement that there may be more payments to other women. Did Michael Cohen make payments to other women for the president? I have no knowledge of that, uh, but I, w I, w I would think if it was necessary, yes. Attorney for Stormy Daniels, Michael Avenatti, firing back. The president had effectively an extramarital uh, affair slush fund that was administered by Michael Cohen and that he would just be expected to take care of these things. Now White House officials trying to explain this denial by the president last month that he knew of Cohen's payment to Daniels. Did you know about the $130,000 payment to Tony Daniels? Hmm. It's a very fast-moving exchange. He's saying he didn't know about it when the payment occurred. He found out about it after the fact. Stormy herself taking a shot at the president, making a surprise appearance on SNL and issuing a warning. I know you don't believe in climate change, but a storm's a coming, baby. Jokes aside, Giuliani claims that Daniel's payments were a personal matter to protect the president's family in addition to possible campaign purposes and therefore not against the law. Tom? Tara, stay with us there. There was also major news made about the Mueller investigation. George asking Giuliani about how they will respond in the event. There's a subpoena for President Trump to testify. Let's take a listen. What happens if Robert Mueller subpoenas the president? Will you comply? Well, uh, we don't have to. He's the president of the United States. We can assert the same privilege as other presidents have. Now, we know efforts by presidents in the past to fight subpoenas have not been successful, but Giuliani also suggesting President Trump may assert his Fifth Amendment right. That's right, Tom. Giuliani said the president may invoke his right against self-incrimination. Giuliani said the president still wants to testify, but from the way the special counsel's office has been acting, it's convincing him that he shouldn't let his client do it. Tom? Tara Palmieri handling all those new developments for us. Tara, thank you. Now to breaking developments in Hawaii, the erupting volcano causing a state of emergency at this hour. The Kilauea volcano, take a look, shooting lava into the air, destroying several homes, and the lava flow blocking streets, shifting magma, and opening new cracks in the earth. 1,800 people forced to evacuate, and authorities bracing for more eruptions. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez is on the scene. Tonight, that ominous line of lava closing in, sending Woody Kihai Nelson's childhood home up in flames. Still a shock, and the memories kind of the one that hit me hard. Seeing these photos in my head of me and my brother in my backyard, and now it's covered in 10 feet of lava. He and his family among the 1,800 people forced to evacuate from two neighborhoods here on Hawaii's Big Island. Nine homes have already burned down as two new fissures have opened in the ground, spurting molten rock as high as 230 feet in the air. This view from above shows just how far these active eruptions now stretch. Nelson came back to this checkpoint today, hoping to be among the hundreds allowed back in to pick up belongings, learning he was too late. Others told they can't return because of the other lingering threat. The biggest concern is with the sulfur dioxide fumes pouring into the air from those eruptions, the toxic fumes in the smoke engulfing those neighborhoods. 
The gas levels too high for Chris Kleps to return home. And with one of the new fishers opening today just feet away, he worries time is running out. I think when you finally do get back home, what will you find? Ashes. <laughs> it's ashes. Residents bracing for that gut-wrenching reality and the possibility this may just be the beginning. Well, it could continue to flow for several weeks, several months, several days, several years. We don't know. The worry level is high right now. And Marcy Gonzalez joins us once again in Hawaii. Marcy, despite those eruptions potentially lasting for weeks, some residents are being allowed to temporarily go back into their evacuated neighborhoods. Yeah, that's right, Tom. About half of the evacuated residents are being allowed back in for now, but they're only able to stay for a few hours because officials are concerned that the winds could shift carrying those toxic fumes. It is something they are keeping a very close eye on tonight. Tom. And we see those line of cars of residents just behind you. All right, Marcy, thank you. Next tonight, the deadly road rage manhunt in Missouri. Witnesses say the driver of a pickup truck was stabbed to death arguing with another driver. The victim identified as a member of the Air National Guard, his family coming forward with an emotional plea. Here's ABC's Will Carr. Deadly road rage. Tonight, the urgent manhunt for the suspect police say stabbed a service member to death. Possible fatality, or we're getting multiple callers. Authorities say Air National Guardsman Cody Harder was driving his Chevy Silverado when he and another man pulled over on the side of the highway outside of Kansas City. Witnesses told authorities the two started fighting. The suspect then allegedly stabbed Harder and peeled out, leaving Harder's family searching for answers. My son, he drove 65 miles an hour. I can only imagine someone was upset because he wasn't going fast enough. Is that a reason to take his life? As she made an emotional plea for help, Harder's mother talked about her son's service in Iraq and after Hurricane Harvey last year. If you saw anything, even if you think it was nothing, please call. Her only solace, the Good Samaritans who rushed to help her son. My son did not die alone. Even though whoever did this, you left him out there to die alone. Tom, police say it's likely that hundreds of people drove by as the road rage and then the attack unfolded. And tonight they're asking for witnesses to come forward with a clear description of the suspect that will help land him behind bars. Tom. Will Carr with that manhunt tonight. All right, Will, thank you. Next, the deadly mosque attack in Afghanistan. At least 14 people killed, dozens wounded, when a bomb exploded in the eastern city of Khost. The mosque was being used for voter registration. There's been no claim so far of responsibility. And back here at home, news tonight about Senator John McCain as he battles brain cancer in Arizona. Senator McCain revealing some of his final wishes, naming who he wants at his funeral. President Trump, who has had a volatile relationship with McCain, not on the list. The senator also with at least one political regret. Here's ABC's Stephanie Ramos. Tonight, Senator John McCain reading from his final memoir as he continues his battle with brain cancer. I have some things I'd like to take care of first, some work that needs finishing, and some people I need to see. As he also plans for his own funeral, according to the New York Times, those closest to McCain have informed the White House that the current plan is for Vice President Mike Pence to attend the service, but not President Trump. In recent weeks, the Times reporting McCain has been joined by close friends and family, including former Vice President Joe Biden. Despite Biden refusing to comment on speculation he might make a 2020 presidential run, McCain encouraging him to, quote, not walk away from politics. The senator also expressing regret from his own 2008 presidential campaign that he chose Sarah Palin to be his running mate instead of longtime friend, former Connecticut Senator Joe Lieberman. This morning, the 81-year-old's son-in-law said McCain doing well. is doing well. He's talking, he's uh, chatty, and he's uh, walking around. It's, look, uh, this is a terrible disease. In the restless wave out later this month, McCain details one of his final wishes. Before I leave, I'd like to see us recover our sense that we are more alike than different. McCain hasn't been on Capitol Hill much since late last year, but he remains involved and engaged. Tom. And our thoughts and prayers with the McCain family along with our co-worker, Megan. All right, Stephanie, thank you. Turning now to weather. Temperatures hitting triple digits from Phoenix to Las Vegas and staying there for much of the week. Let's get right to weather anchor Sam Champion. Sam, it is hot in some parts of the country. 106 in Phoenix today, as you just mentioned, the heat there. That's a record for them. And our first triple digit number in Tucson as well.